Do people type pass me? Now, well, let me answer that question. I did Doctor Who for five years. Uh, the, after that, I did a show called Who Done It? It was a crime quiz show, very cerebral, uh, which you wouldn't have seen because the Americans bought it. But instead of buying ours, they made their own version of it. And it was terrible and came off the surface of the bloody book right. <laughs> so uh, that didn't therefore typecast me for that, but I was just myself as I was a chairman. I then did Wurzel Gummidge where I played this ancient scarecrow and uh, with a carrot for a nose and corn husk eyebrows. You've probably seen pictures of it. I've got them on my desk there later on, uh, which you can see. And that didn't typecast me either. And recently I played a vast terrorist. And so that, that being a scarecrow didn't typecast me either. So that's the answer to the question. You know it doesn't affect some people at all. If you've been heard of and people know you and have known you for years uh, in other capacities, this doesn't affect you. If you're somebody that the public don't know and they do a TV series like Maybury, it was done by an actor called Rupert Davis, a magnificent English actor. He did that for years and when he stopped and came out of it and wanted to do other things, nobody would accept him. As soon as he appeared, they say, oh look, Maybury. And so this killed his profession, killed his business. It's so dead. I've been doing too many things for too long for it to affect me. Okay? Does that answer you? Good, right. The last time I was here was with a play called There's a Girl in My Suit, which you know there was a, a movie which Peter Sellers mm -hmm. did. I unfortunately didn't, but that's what happens in our business. You originate something and you, you make it a success and then you give, give that role to somebody else, which is an old business. So I know Boston well and uh, love it. It's one of probably your most beautiful city in the States, I think. I can't think of a more beautiful one. Good shots, too. Far too good. It's been far too hard to make it. Yeah. Come on, for Christ's sake, say something, otherwise um, I'll go. Are you going to have a Thank second you. volume in your autobiography? Have a what? Another one? Uh, yeah, I love the first one. Good. Well, <laughs> the, uh, the, the reason I wrote the autobiography was that I was doing a series called Wurzel Gummidge, which mm -hmm. you're not allowed to see. I'll talk about that later. You're not allowed to see it because the, the powers that be are convinced that Americans can't understand English. So they say, no, no, we're not going to have Poor and Gummidge because nobody will understand it. The fact that I've played it to hundreds and hundreds of Americans, all who've understood every single word and loved it and says, why don't we get it? That's the, the way it goes. Uh, so I was doing it for a new producer when Southern Television lost their franchise. And I was doing, uh, working for Southern and then Southern lost their franchise to operate, so I had no producer. And so a new producer who had directed and produced a series called, uh, which you've seen in America on PBS, called uh, um, Peter Bowles, uh, Irish. Oh yes, the 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 the, the Irish. R M. R M. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It was. It's a classic English story, mm -hmm. and it was very successful. And he made this series, and uh, he wanted to make Wurzel Gummidge in Ireland, but unfortunately, his co-partner was a very irascible. American gentleman who came back to the States and on interview on television said what he thought of Lord Harlech, who was the head of HTV. And uh, Lord Harlech was shown this within about 48 hours of him making it, and Lord Harlech said, thank you, pull the plug, and pull the plug on two years of series. So we were stuck without any producer, and so we got a new producer eventually in New Zealand, and I made the last three years of Wurzel Gummidge in New Zealand. But in that period, where we weren't filming, as I was expecting to, uh, I wrote the first volume of Moon Boots and Dinner Suits, my autobiography. So the next one will be when I'm next out of work, okay. <laughs> which probably will be any time now. Yeah, we'll to it. yeah, you've got a bit of paper there. You yeah, must have well, something written on it. OK, fair enough. Um, start with number one. Uh, did you follow the Doctor Who at all before your time with the Doctor? And, no. Uh, how about since? No. <laughs> Next. Uh, no, I, I, I must admit I didn't. I was married to a lady called Jean Marsh, right. you may remember, uh, from upstairs, downstairs, and she appeared in Doctor Who. And uh, while we were married, she said, oh, you must watch me in, in Doctor Who. And so that was the first time that I watched it. And I liked it. And I've since seen uh, early specials and got William Hartnell's. And I thought they were superb. And I loved them, um, especially the very, very early ones. And, uh, and after that, I didn't really watch because I was busy doing it myself. 
and at that time the output was pretty extensive and so when I had time off I wasn't working in the program and I'd get the hell out of the country and go to my place out in the sunlight in the Palaeolic Islands where I've had it over the years and so I didn't watch it uh, Pat Troughton was a great personal friend of mine so I used to occasionally see Pat because I was fond of him but um, I'm not a sci-fi buff at all and uh, so I, I don't really watch it and I, I haven't watched it much since I was watching you in um, a virtual murder a little while ago. Where the hell did you see that? I get stuff from England. Ah! And now you're talking. Ah! <laughs> that is a, what I wanted to do. For that was years. really good. Yeah. Um, I suppose you might want to give a little bit of uh, storyline to them. But um, yeah. my, my question is, uh, have you been keeping busy doing other television and, uh, and uh, film besides that? That is my intention. Um, this is a, he's talking about a program called Virtual Murder, which was a series of six one-hour episodes uh, directed by, um, produced by Brian Degas and uh, uh, Judy Garland's ex-musical director, um, Mr. Robertson, and uh, Harry Robertson. Uh, he eventually got, he got arthritis and he couldn't hold a pen and he couldn't work a typewriter, so he became a film producer. I don't quite see the connection. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they made this series, and it was very kooky and very way out and very strange. Yes. Um, and, but they were, being the producers they were, they chose people that, that you would never have thought of to cast. I mean, the, the, the people like Alfred Marx, a wonderful Jewish character actor. I hadn't been seen for years, suddenly they hauled him out there and his wife, uh, who played the, the, the lady who ran the cafe at the time I was working. I played a, 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 a extremely ancient Basque, which is in northern Spain, a terrorist. Uh, he used to own brothels and pornographic bookshops, but he got a bad conscience when they told him they only had a few more months to live. And so he went around blowing all the shops up and setting everything on fire. and. Uh, and uh, uh, talking in rhyme on the telephone to everybody. And it was a magnificent part. I mean, just the sort of thing I've been looking for for years, to play something utterly different from the sort of thing that I've been playing before. And uh, the uh, producer said, you are going to have a whole new career when this is shown. And uh, I said, well, you better hurry up, because I'm practically dead of old age. <laughs> and so this whole new career better start now. And it didn't start at all because unfortunately the series was not well received by the press and so by the time mine was shown, which was episode four, I think, uh, by the time that was shown, the critics weren't watching it. So it didn't do any, me any good at all other than I've made a show tape of it and of course now it's seen by directors who say, oh, no, I, I didn't know to do things like that because I played a Spaniard at a bus and, uh, and I had a wonderful death scenes and n n not the usual comic who or Wurzel or whatever. So, I'm glad you saw it. Oh, it was very good. So. Yeah, it might be one of the only ones we ever did. It. <laughs> Pretty sure. Uh, uh, so, besides that, have you done anything else as well? That's the sort of thing I'm doing. Yes, okay, I, very I, good. I did a series called Real Window for um, Channel 4, uh, uh, which is our sort of rather revolutionary series, uh, and the station, uh, which I played an extremely old uh, Jewish uh, medieval doctor. Uh, it, it's a classic children's writer for a book of his. Uh, that's the sort of work that I want to do. But unfortunately for the last few months I've been very heavily involved in a stage show with, um, you, 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 all, you know who Anthony Newley is? Okay. Yeah, well, of course you know him, he's, he's probably better known in America than in England, although he's English, because he was for 23 years uh, working in Vegas. Um, my son is an extremely excellent actor called Sean. Um, when he asked me what I was doing, I said, I'm doing Leslie Griffiths' new musical called Scrooge uh, with Anthony Newley. And he said, who's Anthony Newley? He'd never heard of him. And he's a very hot young actor. So I was very surprised. That, but we did, uh, as you may have heard, an enormous business. It was wildly successful. And is now coming to America. I've been asked to come, but I don't know whether they'll let me because of the green card problem. But I, I hope to. I've been asked to go to Australia where I have no problems to, to with it with Tony Newton. And um, what else? So that, that's kept me busy for the last two, you know, five months. Um, now I'm, I, I'm here, I'm doing quite a lot of visits to the United States for conferences and for helping BBC Enterprises to uh, push Doctor Who out on a real sort of heavy sale, I think, endeavouring 
at last to get somebody who would take it out uh, not on 